producers of cotton in south carolina and the southeastern united states face many challenges and one of those is managing insect pests in the crop the main insect pests of cotton in this state and region are thrips bollworm and stink bugs but we sometimes have issues with additional arthropods such as aphids spider mites plant bugs grasshoppers cutworms and others i will limit this very short segment to the major problem species and what we have discovered about managing them we will first cover thrips Thrips are the most consistent and predictable insect pest of upland cotton in South Carolina and much of the southeastern United States. These small insects feed on almost all portions of the cotton plant, but the most significant injury occurs on seedlings from plant emergence to about five true leaves. Excessive feeding injury can produce severely stunted plants, often resulting in loss of yield or at least a delay in crop maturity. Our research here at the Edisto Rec has discovered much about controlling thrips in cotton including that the most important species is tobacco thrips and that this species is developing resistance to the broadly used neonicotinoid insecticides. We have learned that the length of protection provided by seed treatments is now much abbreviated and insecticides applied separately in the furrow are better than the seed treatments. Our research has also shown that delaying planting date can be used to reduce injury risk from thrips and there is a free online tool for producers to check that risk before planting. We are looking for natural host plant resistance traits in cotton and have evaluated a new genetically engineered Bt trait that provides protection from thrips that will be available soon. There are many other findings and best management practices for thrips in this presentation and at the links provided. Moving on to bollworm. In the southeastern United States, the bollworm is an important insect pest of cotton. This species is also known as the corn earworm when in corn, podworm when in soybeans, tomato fruit worm when in tomatoes, and so on, as the species feeds on numerous host plants. Since 1996, genetically engineered Bt cotton has helped us manage bollworm, but there are issues with resistance developing to Bt toxins that require us to find ways to help control this pest, such as refining thresholds and timings for insecticides, using trap crops and alternative insecticides, and many more tactics. Bt technology is being presented to this species in two major row crops, corn and cotton, in the same growing season. This presents a problem, as most of the Bt genes and toxins are identical or very similar in mode of action in both crops. Growers can help themselves by demanding non-BT options for corn seeds so they can plant the required 20% structure refuge in corn that will likely help stall resistance to BT traits in cotton. Finally, the stink bug complex is the most important insect pest group of cotton in South Carolina and most of the southeastern United States. These insects are seed feeders that feed on developing fruit called bolls, resulting in substantial yield losses and control costs each year. Stink bugs were not always the number one insect pest group in cotton. The boll weevil, fall and beet armyworms, tobacco budworm, soybean looper, and bollworm were all major pests before stink bugs became important. Reduced use of broad spectrum insecticides made possible by the eradication of the boll weevil and high adoption of Bt cotton resulted in a loss of coincidental control of stink bugs. Quite simply, insecticide use in cotton dramatically dropped and stink bugs filled the void and became our most important group of insect pests in the southeast. In my early research, we found that treatment with insecticide was justified when stink bugs met or exceeded one stink bug per six row feet or when 20% of bowls displayed symptoms of feeding injury from stink bugs. And these thresholds were used for at least a decade across the cotton belt to successfully monitor and control stink bugs in cotton. More recently, in collaborative efforts with colleagues across the southeast, we developed the dynamic bowl injury threshold we use today that incorporates crop phenology into the injury level needed to trigger an insecticide application. This strategy changes the threshold level by week of bloom. Yield and link quality are preserved when this dynamic bowl injury threshold is followed, and this approach has been highly adopted and successful for managing the current number one insect pest group of cotton in the southeast. In summary, good IPM strategies will use several best management practices and control tactics concurrently for optimal management of insect pest in cotton. These approaches for controlling insect pests have been researched by scientists here at Clemson University, resulting in recommendations that ultimately save our producers money and reduce costs for consumers.